Hello, I'm Charlotte Collins and welcome to The Sherlock Show. We have a great show for you today with fashion, beauty, fitness and some good old chat. You won't want to miss it. First up, Dr. Mariam Zamani is sharing her wellness toolkit with us. Prepare to be inspired by her daily rituals, which keep her feeling and looking her best. Next, the ultra stylish NL Marilyn is sharing her go-to fashion pieces right now. Then, founder of Pilates at your desk, Kerry Ann Bradley, is demonstrating some basic Pilates moves that will deter the typical aches and pains that come with a desk job. If you've been sat all day, now is the time to grab a chair and give it a go. But first, it's chat with Tor, Heather and Polly. Welcome, Hi. everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, Heather, I'm going to come straight to you. Oh, We've got God. a lot to talk about today. <laughs> um, because the new Michelin, or the, the updated Michelin guide came out yesterday. It did. This is where all the restaurants get their stars. So tell us what happened. So yeah, they usually do like a big award ceremony, but I think they're just a bit like, nah. So they start, started sort of drip feeding stuff on Twitter yesterday and everyone's been like, oh, okay, this is quicker than we <laughs> thought. But yeah, lots of news. The bigger one is, or the biggest news for the UK anyway, is that Simon Rogan's Long Clume, which is up in Cartmel, has got three stars, oh, which wow. is the sort of highest accolade you three can stars. win. Like yeah, it. there's very few of them Have around. You been there? No. <laughs> Actually, we had, so we had Long Clume booked for my mum's 60th, ah. but, which was like during the pandemic. And then obviously we couldn't go because of the pandemic. And like, I feel like that offer is now so firmly off the table. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, yeah. that was a one time thing. Yeah, yeah it was all. Yeah, it's the boat has gone. The boat has gone. So not going in. Always hard to get a table there, but I think now. Even more yeah. so, oh but no, but he's you know, it's the 20th anniversary of that restaurant, so I think quite a nice way Aww, to yeah. kick off his celebration. Yeah. And then, yeah, there are obviously lots of other stars in London around the UK. There's like Manteca, um, there's a koi in London, which is an amazing African restaurant, which has now got two yes, stars, which is real. Yes, it looks incredible, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. like just really cool. It's like lots of places that, yeah, maybe. 10 years ago might not have mm. got a look in so yeah it's always an exciting mm. day Great. Um, so yes. well it got us thinking obviously about great food great meals and we thought we'd share I mean the brief was most memorable meal ever I assume we mean for a good reason with all positive recommendations um, Polly I'm going to come to you first because the Clove Club was on your list and Heather that got awarded a second star yesterday did, as well right it did yeah, yeah. I, mean, it was, I went there two years ago maybe like pre-pandemic and it's definitely a kind of special occasion yeah restaurant as, a, as kind of Michelin star ones are mm. um, but it was just one of those where you know, it was a tasting menu and I love going to places where they just kind of bring you stuff I so agree so many weird combinations that you know I, I couldn't tell you really what I ate but like everything that came out was just so sublime mm. and like those flavors that you rarely get and oh I just loved every single bit and like the drinks were great the service was great it's a great vibe and they're not too stuffy no, quite relaxed like nice blue tiles hasn't yes, it it's like so cool. quite modern yeah so I just loved it and I would love to go I think we were going to go back um, for our anniversary maybe like December before um before Christmas actually and then we decided not to because when everything Christmas. was yeah. <laughs> we were like <laughs> <pandemic. Life. laughs> yeah and it was so disappointing so I'm really hoping we might find yeah. an excuse to go back another time yeah. yeah and you have a Lisbon recommendation as well oh, yeah. I do this is a recent one I basically have the worst memory so I'm like I'm gonna pick one in recent memory that was very, <laughs> yeah. very memorable. Yeah. yeah pretty much last <laughs> week um but it was recommended to me um by someone and we just kind of turned up and we hadn't booked or anything it was quite a small place but really great vibes and the food was just excellent and what really struck me was that we were a group of three non-veggies and three veggies and we were totally catered for and it didn't feel mm. like either of us were kind of sacrificing anything by, you know, not having meat or having to choose, you know, veggie options. But anyway, it was just so good. And again, it was one of those ones where they just kind of brought it out and everything was just like, oh, yeah, I love so amazing. Yeah, That's no, Dao no. Noi. Dao Noi, yeah. Dao Noi. So nice. if you're in Lisbon, 100% recommend that. Good to know. Um, Chor, what's yours, your recommendation? This is, we all thought this was somewhere completely different. <laughs> I really struggle with this because to me, memorable is like very different to like the best meal you've ever had or like yeah. best I don't know. So to me, that was more like an experience. It's like an, an emotional thing as opposed to like the food. Mm, but the yeah. food was also amazing. So this is a place in Corfu that I went to the summer before the pandemic hit. And it just kind of, I don't know, I look back at it, that was something really corny. It's like, life was like so good. Like none of this shit happened. Yeah. With all like, our family, the food, the setting, and the food was just like amazing. So this is it's in Corfu. Glyph, no, g- sorry, it's Glyfa, called Taverna Glyfa in Corfu. It's like it's so random, but it's like the most beautiful little spot. And the food, I can still like taste the mm. food. It was so <sighs> good. I remember a bit like you're kind of bring everything for the starters. I was like, look, just bring like everything. <laughs> I remember like everything was just so 
fresh, like oh, everything. Yeah. And, the, and for my main, I had this most amazing seafood pasta, and I just love seafood pasta. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was number one. The pa you know, the pasta like so eggy and thin, oh, like yum. Italy. The sauce was like so tomatoey and garlicky and amazing, yeah. amazing fresh fish. And then the pudding had it was like baklava, like pie, oh, my God. and it was like where it, where it like oozes the like the honey. The honey. It. Mm. I mean, it's making me so hungry. I know. So, <laughs> yeah, that, you <laughs> love a bowl of pasta, right? Me now. too. You, also, you just can't beat that like Mediterranean yeah. summer yeah. vibe. So to me, that's the definition of like memorable. Okay, I get that. So yeah, that sounds lovely. if you're in Corfu, book a table. <laughs> <laughs> um, Heather, what are your recommendations? I think we've got a, a load. A so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know I've spoken about it certainly to you before, but the Black Swan in Old Stead, which I know you. Want to go yes. to um, is up in Yorkshire is definitely like the most memorable. It's um, Tommy Banks restaurant and it's just in the middle of nowhere in Yorkshire. I mean, it took us like a sort of 50 minute cab ride from York to get there, but it's so worth it. And it's got accommodation in these lovely sort of cottages which are there and they grow everything themselves. So all the food is just completely theirs, even the cows and you know, beef and stuff is all like stuff that they've sort of grown and reared. Mm. So yeah, everything mm. was really fresh. You can go and look around the garden the next mm. day and like, again, yeah. tasting menu, you don't know what you're going to get necessarily, but it's all so bloody good. Ooh, really, like, yeah. amazing. It's desperate to go. Yes, amazing. it's definitely, if you're looking for a like romantic weekend away or yeah. something, it's definitely a good one nice. to go to. Mm. So nice. Uh, you've also got Koya. I've also got Koya, which is in Soho and you still have to queue even sort of 10 years on to get mm. in, which I did on Friday and it's so worth it. This is Koya with a K, not with the a Okay, not with a C. Yes. Yeah, so it's the Japanese hand pulled noodle restaurant, which Ooh, is like, oh, it's so good and everything. Is it like ramen? No, no, not really. It's udon. It's sort of like big, mm. thick noodles, but with like various different broths. Like, you know, in Japan, they like to have lots of hot noodles mm. with a cold dip mm -hmm. and then or cold noodles with a cold dip. It's like oh, a sort yum. of, yeah. Oh, my I actually don't love different things. Noodles, I know you don't, but you don't. No, they're a bit slippery. Oh, I love oh. them. No, these are chewy and mm, mm. they're amazing. Okay. I'll give it a try. That's really good. Bao. Mm. Bao, yeah, just because the first time I went to oh the God. Windmill Street one back in the day and it was just amazing and I just really rate that group like yeah. every single one they've got I just think it's mm. so good and then I didn't mention it there but I'll just quickly say because I remembered it on the train but a Coco which is a um, West African restaurant in London it's quite expensive because it's a tasting menu but it's genuinely beautiful and the food is like the most memorable I've had in a really Where long it? time it's um, near Benner's Tavern that sort of yep. fits okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. the neck of the woods Marlebone-esque mm -hmm. area nice. but no it's honestly like Amazing. Okay. Okay. A K O K. Sorry, I can't spell that out loud. No, genuinely like mind blowing food. Nice. Like, that really good. Good. Um, Charlotte, I feel like you've probably got some great ones. Yeah. Well, I do. I, I'm only going to. I'm going to talk about one though, which is um, a restaurant called Ben's Deval in Mallorca. My, my sort of a blend of the two, which is sort of like you. It's it's only got the happiest memories, but it's also like the most incredible food. It doesn't have a Michelin star, which is Michelin people. If you're listening, I mean, it's an outrage. <laughs> it's so shit. It is also a tasty menu, and it is basically it's in Daya, um, and you sort of wind your way around the kind of the cliffs, and you end up. I mean, the, the view from it's basically like an old house with this parapet terrace that just oh. looks out on I mean the, like on what's the word unparalleled completely uninterrupted views of the sea like just wow. as far as the eye that's can not see. what they film that famous scene in the night manager no it? it's not <laughs> really close to there yeah exactly Ooh, really. it's really I'm kind of imagining that yeah it's similar advice but it's up high so you've got oh. so it's just so beautiful and I recommend going for lunch only because it's a long tasting menu so a long even in the height Ooh. of summer like you know you're under the shade a long boozy yes. indulgent oh. lunch there and it's just stunning oh, it's stunning I, yeah it's heaven. Oh, it's heaven. Love so the special. sound of that. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. I'm sorry. I just thinking about it. Um, we're going to talk about fashion now. Um, there's no there's no real intro to this other than this happened to me yesterday. Um, we thought we would talk about the etiquette of buying items that other people, that your friends, might otherwise have. I got a message from a friend yesterday saying... I've just bought X that you own. I hope that's okay. Which, by the way, I think is the perfect etiquette. Yes. Yeah. Totally fine yeah. to buy something that your friend has as long as you tell them. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. I do think you have to trend kind of carefully with it, though. Like, we sort of briefly touched on this with each other earlier, but I feel like there are certain things like staples and think nothing too statement where I do think it's absolutely fine to buy the same thing. Run it by them first. Yeah, say, I know, agree with that. Is yeah. It, you know, I'm going to buy this. Is that okay? But I think there are certain things where I would be a bit irked, even if like they asked me if it was like something really out there or like something that was, felt very signature to me. Mm -hmm. I'd be a bit like, oh, really? Okay, sure. You can't really say no, but... Right, yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you give an example of what, like... 
if so I, we, I yeah, know. we were talking about it. Okay, so like, I don't have it now, but remember my gilet? My, my, yeah. right. So like, that is a very, we said that was quite a very like, you bought this piece, you've invested in it, and it's very like true to one's own style. So yeah. therefore yeah. it feels a bit, copying yeah. for a friend buy it but what if I like that white shirt which yeah then really that's totally fine yeah. Right? Yeah, so if I wore that white would you be like oh that's weird to wearing that shirt no, I no, still no. think it's weird to buy it and not mention it I still think you, ju- you just say to a friend by I, the way I bought, I bought that shirt I think like it sort of depends I feel like maybe with a shirt like that you could get away with saying like oh I actually didn't realise you had that because yeah, it's quite you know, yeah, probably yeah, 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 it's yeah. Yeah. but like maybe your sandals for yeah. example mm-hmm. like they're not sort of exclusive to you but Tor might really like them yeah. however she might say if she didn't mention that she was going to buy them I think that would be weird yeah you don't think it's weird to just show up in them well I, I don't know I don't think so no oh. I don't know. <laughs> no I'm trying to I think I've got a different fashion sense to a lot of my friends so I can't see it happening but I mean to be honest like I think maybe because none of us necessarily buy these big expensive statement pieces it's maybe not quite the same there's probably been things where we've both liked a similar dress at, and other stories to be honest I wouldn't mind yeah. like if yeah. somebody did I and just, vice versa I think I feel I'm almost like if I see a friend and she's like oh, I love that shirt I'd be like oh well get it it's yeah nice yeah Sorry, totally get it, get it, get it. Yeah. Mm. it's not about it's not about saying no to people it's about it's the reverse it's it being weird when people don't tell you yeah, that they've yeah. done it I agree. see what I mean yeah I do I don't think I will take offence really I think if anything I'd be flattered well we did come to the conclusion we couldn't quite identify why it was childish but maybe it is just a bit childish to care I guess if you two are really into fashion it's your thing it's your yeah. life and you like have yeah, like you say, you've got signature styles and, you know, you've spent a lot of time debating whether to buy something mm. and then you go for it. It probably then is very I annoying. Think that's, if, at that's the same it, time, yeah. this is what you guys write about and you in Instagram about. So you are you are influencing. Well, it's also your job. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, like, I got want to caveat by saying, you know, people are buying stuff that I've worn on, like, Instagram or whatever. Like, obviously, I don't buy <laughs> yeah. like, I would have no job otherwise. <laughs> but, but with your Loave handbag, would you be a bit like, hmm, if, like, one of your friends was um, just bought it and didn't oh, tell you? It's so tricky because I don't feel like it's a really, you know, I can't be like, this is my handbag yeah, because yeah. it's quite a popular handbag. However, like, if a close friend was like, I don't know, I feel like, It'd be nice for them to just like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm yeah. going to get that handbag. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Like, just, yeah. Just I think with something like that, you should say, yeah. Just ask me if it's okay. Just exactly. say, I'm yeah. getting yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Like, how exciting. I'd be like, great. Yeah. But like, just to show up with it, I'd be like, mm. agreed. Or get it in a different colourway anyway. Yeah. <laughs> just bring it up. Just say, just <laughs> literally yeah. one sentence. Not yeah. Not. Um, okay, let's. Okay. Uh, no uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, let's finish. Uh, we have NL Marilyn, the very stylish NL Marilyn coming up next. And um, she is showing us her go-to wardrobe picks right now. So it made us think about... I'll go to your wardrobe picks right now. Uh, one thing we are all living in, tour. I'll come to you first. What are you living in at the moment? I am living in a pair of White Company tracksuit bottoms. And I know, Polly, you're wearing yours today, so mine are very similar colour, <laughs> but they're cashmere. And I've never really owned a pair of cashmere trackies, but they're really quite life-changing. I think you can wear cashmere trackies, like, literally to, like, a bull. <laughs> like, there are very few occasions they don't work for. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have worn them to supermarket, and yeah. I do have a different way. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. bull or just supermarket. Like <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. They're so oh, good. Love nice. them. Yeah, so quite basic, really. Know, um, but, yeah, I'm loving them. Love that. Heather, what about you? Again, like, a bit obvious for this time of year, but just a coat that I'm... The only coat I'm wearing, it's a barber coat, but it's, like, a sort of quilted-esque, one of those Alexa Chung barber ones nice. and it's really nice and long and navy but with like a sort of cord sort of beige collar so it's got a bit of yeah so like a sort of little bow that you can it's tie cute. as well so yeah no i know it's so boring no, that sounds so i cute. haven't it's bought so any so stuff heavy. all year really and i'm just like the one thing i've worn pretty much every yeah. day nice, nice. Okay. It's tricky to dress at this time of year it, it is, is. <laughs> polly what are you excuse me what are you living um, in right now well it'll come as a surprise to no one that i'm living in tracksuits <laughs> <laughs> particularly one by a brand called life of ease which i know you've got Yes. one haven't you navy navy yeah it's so um, comfortable it's yeah. just so comfortable it's a really good fit I've got one in kind of like a fairly bright green not like a neon but like a good jade green and I don't know I feel kind of like put together in a comfortable way when I wear it like because it's matching I put a pair of trainers mm. and a coat on it's pretty much what I wear when I'm not in the office so yeah nice. it's a particularly polished cut isn't it it's yeah. quite straight so you feel quite so you like feel, together in yeah it. yeah mm. together so yeah I'm a big fan of that what about you yeah. Charlotte oh no I'm mean, literally mine is so boring I, it's my Ray coach I'm not even going to oh, dwell on it it's, I don't but I really just don't <laughs> recognize it. I'm saving myself for spring summer I'm very excited I ordered <laughs> another pair of silk pajamas as well all right thank you so much guys it was lovely chatting to you all next up it is the next in our wellness toolkit series and it is one of London's leading 
leading aesthetic doctor is Dr. Mariam Zamani. She's sharing her daily routine to ensure her well-being is on point. You won't want to miss it. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mariam Zamani and I am also the founder of MZ Skin. I'm super excited to be here today with Sheer Lux to talk to you about my health and wellness toolkit. I'm not much of a morning person, but I wake up, I give myself a few minutes to stretch, and then unfortunately I go straight to my email just to see if there's anything dire that I need to address. And as soon as I'm done with all of that, I take a quick shower and I come downstairs and I have a hot water lemon and ginger. So there's hot water in here, my lemon juice that's been freshly squeezed, I put it in and my ginger. And then I let that um, simmer on the stove for about 15, 20 minutes before I drink it. So now my hot water lemon and ginger is ready and as I'm sipping this, by the way, you should try and drink it all in one go because uh, the acidity from the lemon is not good for your teeth. So it's good if you're going to do it, have it now and then brush your teeth afterwards. Then I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about my vitamin routine. I love having vitamins and minerals. I obviously prefer to have everything in my food, but I think it's nice to be able to support that with some vitamins. So I will go with this. This is a probiotic. I really like those. Sometimes just for gut health, I think it's really important. I think it's linked to so many diseases and inflammation. So really important. I also love calcium and vitamin D for lots of reasons, not just for bone uh, and skin health, but also just for general health. So this is my calcium. I love these because, oh my God, they're almost done, but I love these because they all taste like chocolate. So this is my vitamin D that I have every day. A daily vitamin, it's twice daily, so I have two of these in the morning. And then once I'm done with this, I go upstairs, brush my teeth, because as I just said, this has a lot of acidity, the hot water lemon and ginger, mainly from the lemon. And I will have my breakfast before I head out to my office. For my mental health, you know, I'm so busy all day, every day. Working out is really something that I can't not do every single day. So, three times a week, I have my PT session with my longtime trainer, David. He's been with me for 11 years, literally six weeks after my daughter was born. I met him and we have never parted ways since. And also he introduced to me the Polar. This is a band that I wear around my abdominal cage and it really monitors my heart rate, um, you know, the calories that you burn, time. Then it's clicked on or, you know, Bluetooth to your phone. So you get it all in your little app and you can track yourself. You can track your workouts. And I think that's also really interesting. In addition to this, I actually go to kicks uh, every day, pretty much for 40 to 50 minutes of cardio. I don't push myself at all. I just get a little sweaty. I increase my heart rate and I actually read the Daily Mail every day while I'm on it too. So for me, working out, gym, exercising is a way to release any sort of tension. So for lunch every day, it depends. If I get a chance, I sneak back home since my office is super close to the house. Most days I have either a salad or a soup or sometimes if I'm really hungry, both. I'm gonna show you both today because I happen to have both today. Today I'm gonna have a chopped salad with cucumbers. Avocado, which is basically something I eat in bulk every single day. Lots of good fats. I also love tomatoes. And last, a little bit of blue cheese, which is one of my favorites. And then I mix this together with my sauce, which is mainly olive oil uh, and a little bit of balsamic, salt and vinegar. And there we go. Doesn't this look gorgeous and delicious? And also one of my favorites, especially in the winter time, is chicken noodle soup. So this is absolutely something I can't live without and I probably have it four times a week, no matter what else I'm eating. And chicken, obviously, and vegetables like leek and a little bit of flat pasta in it. So uh, this is literally my staple. It's great because not only does it have a little bit of protein, it has a lot of fluid, and of course it has so many nutrients. Uh, with the vegetables that are inside of it too. Another part of my wellness routine that I really love and gives me a little bit of, I don't know how to explain it, maybe a little bit of calmness, 
uh, and just makes me happy is scent. I think it's really important, even in my office as well as my home. I love Deep Teak. So the one that I'm burning right now is Tuberose. And the reason I like this also is because my name in Farsi is the Tuberose flower. And it reminds me of when I used to go visit my grandparents in Iran and they would welcome me at the airport every single time with all these fabulous flowers from Mariam, which is Tuberose. And so that just makes me happy with that memory. Another part of my wellness program is really taking care of my skin. So as the founder of MZ Skin, I think it's really important to take care of the largest organ in your body. It doesn't take a lot of time, but consistency is key. And so if you keep it simple, you can actually keep it consistent and that's the skincare that's gonna work the best for you. In the evenings when I have about you know, 10, 15 minutes to spare, I cleanse my face and then I love using the Radiance and Renewal Mask and this is really an excellent way to get rid of any dead skin, debris. And then I follow that with our new LED Supercharge 2.0. There are two different settings on this and I use it actually on the red setting and this has two combinations of wavelength, the red and the infrared. And so red is actually something that helps with anti-inflammation, uh, it helps soothe the skin and the infrared goes deeper into the skin and helps promote collagen production. So you just place it on your face for about uh, 10 minutes every single day if you wanted to, but I usually do it two or three times a week. And once I'm done with the LED, then I continue on with my skincare routine. And for me, it's always about trying to bolster that collagen production in the evening. So I use um, vitamin C, brighten and perfect. And then I follow it with our placenta and stem cell night mask, which is deeply hydrating and nourishing while you sleep. So when I wake up in the morning, that's what gives me that dewy, glowy complexion. So how do I love to relax in the evening? Well, I love using Epsom salts. It's really a great way to detoxify after exercising, after a long day in general, and put it all in. And then afterwards, I love to use um, some oils and it depends on what I have available. I'm always buying new ones to see what I like. This is the only place that I really use oils. And this one is the Ep uh, Espa Soothing Bath and Body. And I just put a couple drops into the water, which I kind of think is kind of nice. And I think that makes the skin feel nice and soft and ready for bed. So sleep is so crucial and the most important thing to me. Everybody knows, including my children, never to disturb me when I'm sleeping. And that's because if I don't have a good night's sleep, then the next day is really difficult and I become a grouchy mean person. And one of the things that I just found a few months ago is a weighted blanket. And it is the best sleep ever. I fall asleep in like three seconds flat. And because of the weighted blanket, you end up kind of staying in your position all night long. And that is also better for the fine lines and wrinkles on your face. So not only do I get a great sleep, I feel very cozy, but it's good for the skin too. Thanks everybody for watching my health and wellness toolkit. I hope I shared with you something maybe you didn't know already and that you might get excited about something that you can do for yourself to live your best life. We are at the village of Anya Highmarsh and we are going to go to her new press day. Perhaps you could just talk us through some of the collection downstairs. Yeah. I wanted to do something that was lots of just delicious little things. For example, this really gorgeous basket. A camel. All hand crocheted. Really kind of like a piece of art. It opens like this. Seen on so many red carpets. Really and just size. Yeah, this little blowfish. Another yeah, so artistry, fun. right? Sort of slice of bunch, all hand beaded. The designers be so happy <laughs> designing and creating these things. Yes. Okay. We'll see some stuff with a bit more personality, a bit of colour, with a bit of humour, sustainable, recyclable. I mean, they're helping the environment and putting a bit of a fun spin on fashion, which is great. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Mariam. So many good tips. That weighted blanket sounds so good. Right, next up, if you are struggling with what to wear at the moment, the gorgeous NL Marilyn is sharing her ride or die looks she is living in right now. Hi, Shilux. My name is Marilyn and I'm going to be showing you my go-to outfits that I'm loving right now. Hope you enjoy. I've been after um, a grey chunky knit for quite some time now and this is perfect. This is from me and M. It actually has a detachable snood so you can have it high neck when you want or take it off and wear it as a crew neck. 
I've gone for the all grey tones. So this is a some straight dad trousers from Mango and my Jordans, grey Jordans and an oversized jacket again and my Chanel which is perfect for seeing friends, uh, going into town for meetings and yeah, everyday look. These boots are the perfect riding style boots. They're from Flattered, very versatile. You can use them for lunches, walks with your friends and just everyday use really. I've paired them with um, these basically leggings and my Isabel Morant jacket, which I absolutely love, my Chanel, but also I would use a small crossbody bag as well. And this fedora hat. I absolutely love this look. Again, I've worn it before and I'll keep wearing it again. So this coat is a recent buy of mine. It's from the Frankie shop. Very oversized fit, but I absolutely love it. I'm wearing it with this cream cashmere jumper from H&M, basic leggings, some long boots, and this amazing Dumelia um, cream bag, which is absolutely interesting shape. I really love this outfit. I've actually worn it before, but I'll keep wearing it again because it's just so versatile. So I purchased this Prada puffer jacket last year, and honestly, it's been the best purchase. It is so warm. I'm wearing it with this M&K tracksuit, which is absolutely amazing quality and not too thick, so you don't feel too hot underneath this jacket. And my Bottega boots. And honestly, this is the perfect outfit to keep that winter chill out. So even though it's winter, we all still will go out at some point, hopefully. Uh, these heels are perfect for winter. They are the YSL slingback heels. Originally, I wanted the tweeds with the gold cap, but these are just as great. Paired them with some stirrup leggings and this oversized blazer, blazer coat, I'm not too sure. Um, very similar to my Isabel Morant jacket, but this is with the asymmetric button. I've actually not got anything on underneath because it's just so warm. I've got my Bottega bag, perfect for evening. And yeah, I would also wear this with a short dress, like a black dress and some tights. But this is great for keeping warm and stylish at the same time. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Every outfit was goals. Next up, founder of Pilates at your desk, Carrie Ann Bradley is demonstrating a five minute routine which can be done at your desk, which helps to get rid of the standard bad posture and hunched shoulders that come with being glued to your laptop all day. Hi, my name's Carrie Ann Bradley and I'm founder of Pilates at your desk and Move at your desk. I'm a Pilates teacher and have been for several years now and actually found Pilates at your desk because every week my clients would come to move with me and they'd be returning with the same aches and pains that they'd had the week before. So I've put together a programme of movements that they could do while seated at their desk. So today I'm going to share with you some of those moves targeting specific areas of the body. So here goes, you're going to bring your fingertips onto your shoulders and then a la front crawl, you're going to bring one elbow forward and then the other one. And then once you've got the hang of that, because the coordination can go a little bit out the window sometimes, you can start to turn your spine side to side, looking towards your back elbow as you go. So you're getting your head to move as well, really nice for the neck, changing where you're looking as well, so it's an exercise for the eyes also. And then we're going to change direction, going for some elbow backstroke. Now, because you've had your wrist bent like this, we'll just do a counter pose for that. So you can interlock your fingers, press your arms forward, nice stretch for the wrists as well and then reach your arms up above your head. You're going to lift the tops of your shoulders all the way up to your ears, and then pull the tops of your shoulders down. Lift them up, pull them down, lift them up, pull them down, and then you're gonna grab hold of your left wrist, 
and we're going to take a nice side bend over to the right. So this is really good for your back. Keep your left sit bone down, grab hold of your other wrist and go up and over. And you're trying to make a long curve with your spine. Let go of your hands and we're just going to roll our wrists all the way down. You can roll your hips too if you fancy, why not? So here's something that you can do for your neck now. So I want you to imagine you've got a pen on your nose and you're just going to draw little circles with the pen, taking those circles a little bit bigger and then you can go the other way. So starting small and then making them bigger, trying to draw them with your eyes too. And coming back to centre and then you're going to turn your head to your right, leaving your left shoulder behind and then come back to centre. So the next one gets a thumbs up because it feels like a really good stretch for the neck. So if you take your right ear to your right shoulder and drop both arms, you should feel a stretch in the opposite side of the neck. If you wiggle your fingers, it increases it a little bit more and come out to centre and have a wiggle out. So now we're going to do some movements for your belly. It actually stretches your spine at the same time, so it's like a double whammy. So I want you to sit up on your sit bones. When you sit up on your sit bones, your pelvis is in a neutral position. You can pop your hands onto your knees for me. We're going to start to tilt the pelvis under and then sequentially round up through your back. So you feel like you're getting a bit of a um, stretch for the back. To make it a bit more belly focused, we're going to interlock those fingers and bring your hands behind your head. Press your head back into your hands, and now we do that again, moving to the back of the sit bone. So we're tilting the pelvis under, aiming for our shoulders to be above our hips. So we're creating a C-type shape with the spine. You're going to lift your right leg and bring your knee up towards your nose, taking your left armpit towards your right knee, transitioning to the other side. Good. So we're going to move on to some stuff that you can do for your back now, for your spine. So pop your hands on your knees for me. Sit up on your sit bones so you've got a right angle where your legs meet your torso. So you turn your head right, then your shoulders, your middle back and your lower back and your right hand will slide up your leg. Turn as far around to the right as you can and then come back to centre. Go the other way, so you're moving from the top of your back, then the middle all the way to the lower and coming back. This is a bit more out there. So you're going to reach your legs out, flex your toes back towards your face and then reach your arms above your head. And then from here, imagine there's a tug of war going on between your sit bones and the top of your head. And this in itself is, is hard to hold, really. And we're going to start to rotate round to the right. And you can wiggle your fingers and your toes and then come back to centre, going round to the other side. And a wiggle here, good. And then centre, again, you can do as many as you want, but I'm only going to demonstrate to each side. And a wiggle, and then centre. And there you go. So now you're going to sit with your legs in this position, in a turned out position. You're going to lift your right heel up so you're on the ball of your foot. And then as gracefully as you can, you're going to swivel yourself around to face left. You're going to take your right hand, reach it up to your ear, and then take a side bend over the back of your chair. Come back up to the top and then press that arm down, pressing into this foot like crazy, checking the knee is facing the same way as the second and third toe. You're going to swivel yourself around to the other side. Reach your arm up to your ear, side bend over the back of your chair, and then coming back to centre, and you can just have a wiggle out. So, if you press into your heels like crazy, you can have your feet turned out a little bit, hands can be on the knees. Moving from your sit bones, you're going to hinge forward, moving from your pelvis all the way to your head. If you press into your feet like crazy, you'll start to feel how this resembles a squat, not just in how it looks, but how it feels as well. And then you can push yourself back up by pressing into your heels going forward, pressing into those feet like crazy, and then pressing back up. Straight into a hamstring stretch now. From here, you're going to reach one leg forward, flexing your toes back towards your face. Pop your hands on your hips, and now from here, same thing, hinging forward, really pressing into the heel that stays on the floor, and then coming out of it. Good, and hinging forward, and coming out of it, and one more like this. Coming out of it, bringing both feet down, making sure those knees are um, in a line with each other so one's not more forward than the other. And then just hinge forward a couple of times so you make sure that you haven't created any rotations or anything like that. And there you have it. Thank you so much for moving with me today. And this has been a routine. However, it's any movement that you do is movement in your credit bank. So even if you just slot a minute here, a minute there into a day, you're gonna feel better for it. And I hope to move with you again soon. Bye.
So that's it for today. Thank you so much to Carrie Ann, Marilyn, and of course, Polly, Heather, and Tor. On the next show, we have some more fab content with a parenting special from a fashion haul to an interview with a boundaries expert to packing your hospital bag and family supper inspo. All ages are covered, so you will not want to miss it. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below. Give us a thumbs up if you haven't already, and do subscribe too. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye-bye.